Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Pantis, co-founder here of Envision Blockchain. Been a long time. Good catching up with everyone. Today, I'm just going to go through a little bit about Glassnode and some of the on-chain metrics that they have been putting together for some time as far as their data analytics are concerned. And something that's brand new and pretty exciting, actually, to the space is this uh, concept of the workbench where uh, you can basically use the metrics that they already have and create your own formulas, uh, which really adds a ton of value in the space. But just to give you a brief intro, this is this is the, the, the homepage here. And you can obviously go ahead and take a look at some of the individual charts. And they show an array of different uh, currencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, as well as some of the stable coins that, that exist in the space. We're not going to go too too deep into everything here today. Just wanted to give you a brief overview and a little look around of what Glassnode looks like and to kind of give you a high level overview of how you can begin driving value using on-chain metrics. This is a standard dashboard that they give you right off the bat. And I think it gives you a pretty good overview as to all the amount of, I guess, short-term and long-term type metrics uh, that you'd want to look at as far as the fundamentals of the current state of the Bitcoin network in this specific case. These are the core on-chain metrics, as you can see over here for Bitcoin. And you can also go ahead and take a look at the core on-chain metrics for Ethereum, which I find to be very fascinating. For example, circulating supply, issuance rate, the overall number of active direct addresses, uh, number of new addresses, and everything you can find definitions for these metrics. Actually, if you come, if you go back into the uh, chart sec, we we're just talking about the addresses. So, for example, is the number of active addresses, and here you have a metric description, which is the number of unique addresses that were active in the network, either as a sender or receiver. Only addresses that were active in successful transactions are counted. So, this is basically monitoring the various different addresses. Uh, on the Bitcoin network and monitoring their activity as far as acting as either a sender or receiver of Bitcoin. So, you know, what's interesting is you can begin deriving the fact that when we look at this chart, there's there's a little bit of a price discrepancy, or rather there's a discrepancy between the, the activity uh, on chain, sending and receiving, versus the actual price itself, the price move. And we, we haven't yet seen any sort of correlation as far as, well, this is a new high price versus, you know, the price is making a higher high relative to this previous high. And, and there's a bit of a divergence here as far as the active addresses, which, which is interesting in and of itself, but you can compare that to, you know, to, to other metrics, for example, new addresses, right. Which also shows that we haven't seen new addresses being born on, on the network. Likewise, that relates to the current activity on the network. So short term, that's not exactly bullish for the actual price action, um, as opposed to, you know, if we take a look at other, other metrics, such as, you know, total exchange supply in relation to the circulating supply. And I can, I can show you all that here in just a little bit. So if we take a look here, we can, we can actually type this in exchange. And you can go into, you can go into the exchange balance, right? And you can begin seeing that there's actually been Bitcoin that's been removed from exchanges. And you can see how that positively correlates with the price action. So the more that's removed from exchanges, the more, or the less sellers that would be. Meaning if, if you have Bitcoin pouring into exchanges, typically that's a sign that they're coming for stable coin uh, and vice versa if it's being removed. You know they're they're putting into storage or or it's you know it's going it's it's the supply is is basically not in a position to be sold. So with that in mind, we can begin moving over to to the workbench, which I find interesting. I can show you briefly how to use this because it's a new feature, not much content out about that. And what we can do is we can begin adding a metric. So for example, if we wanted to go and take a look at you know the exchange supply, the exchange balances, we can go ahead and do that, right? We can add that and then we could we could also add another metric here let's say we want to bring in price so now you have two charts that are going right now so you have the exchange supply relative to the price and if you ever want to block one out you can just click it or unclick it and you can you can isolate which one you want to see at different times uh, but what i find it to be really fascinating is here you know actually let's we'll, we'll add one more this is this is the, the one that I'd say is most recently spoken about is the supply shock metric. So if we go and take a look at the exchange supply relative to the circulating supply, 
we can go and add this formula by taking, let's say here, we see that the circulating supply is M3. So we could take M3 and we could divide that by the exchange balance M1. So this is, this is now how much is in supply relative to how much is on the exchanges. And we can pull that up. And then what we do is we can take the circulating supply and the exchange balance supply away. And we will have a metric that hopefully shows us a bit of a divergence here. You can see that you know the the circulating supply was growing at a at a rate against the exchange that existed on the at a rate that existed versus versus the existence of the supply that existed on chain quicker. So there's a bit of a divergence here. You can see this was kind of trending up as the price was trending down, which is odd because the circulating supply divided by the exchange supply should be decreasing. As people put more on exchanges, the, the circulating supply diminishes in relation to the exchange supply. So you would think that there's more for sale as, as you know, circulating supply decreases versus the exchange supply. But in this specific case, we saw the opposite happening. We saw the price coming off as the circulating supply was increasing against the exchange supply. And eventually we saw this supply shock come in and the price correlate as a, as a direct result, you know, and then, and then if you want to be really fancy, you could begin adding other things such as, you know, maybe exchange flows. So you can begin to see, you know, the net position change the net because sometimes, you know, you have a greater outflow than, than inflow and that's what really matters or vice versa. So now you can begin seeing, if we take this formula away, you can begin seeing how the exchange outflow has been very strong and, and that obviously correlated quite well with, with price in, in the same time frame, which makes complete sense that you would have exchange outflows versus circulating supplies. The circulating supply increased relative to the exchange outflows. And you can see how that, that correlates with price. Now that, that, that shows very positive fundamentals, but in relation to some of the other charts that we were looking at before, you know, over here on the, on the dashboard site, as it relates to the number of active addresses uh, versus the new addresses, these are still very low, and you can and you can also see that the number of transactions has not been has not really come come back into the market. So realistically, there's still a lot of short term bear, but long term you can kind of see that that people are buying and removing supply. So so there's obviously some sort of supply shock that's that's in the making, but some front end demand as far as the network is concerned in the immediate future is. Is still lagging, but in, in in any in any case, that's kind of a brief overview as to how you know Glassnode Studio works. A little bit about the difference between the metrics and the formulas, and how to how to find the the metric definitions here, and also a little way to start putting t things together as far as the workbench is concerned. Cool. If you if you like this video, please uh, make sure to do the needful subscribe and and continue following our channel. We'll have some more information out to you here soon.